Yeah, let's go to Sir Vincent Fien. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Sir Vincent. It's just got a bit, got a little bit heated. No problem on. at all. Former Consul General to Jerusalem. Uh, that means that he was a de facto ambassador to the Palestinian, the fledgling Palestinian state. Trustee of the Balfour Project, working towards peace in the Middle East. Good luck with that. And there's two, two state solution. First of all, um, as a diplomat, tell me the importance of that summit going on in Riyadh right now in Saudi Arabia. It's unusual. I think it's important, uh, bringing together, uh, as you said earlier, uh, Sunni and Shia uh, regimes, uh, the Egyptians, Jordanians, the two nearest neighbors uh, with peace treaties with uh, with Israel, Lebanon, the PLO, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, and importantly, the Iranian president, who has some degree of control over Hezbollah in uh, southern Lebanon. Um, that means that there'll be Conversations in the corridors, I hope, urging restraint on Iran and on Hezbollah. There is a sort of controlled conflict going on at the moment yeah. between uh, in southern Lebanon and northern Israel. It needs to stop. Um, and I've already heard from um, uh, news reports that the uh, crown prince of Saudi Arabia, who's uh, the guy who runs the place, Mohammed bin Salman, has been calling for an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. That's the standard... Arab approach, which actually is not very far away from that of the European Union and uh, sure. the US, the two-state solution that we've been talking about for 30 or 40 years. One more thing, they'll be talking about um, the need for a ceasefire. And I'd just like to say on that, that we've heard reports, uh, true reports of the turmoil and deaths in uh, the hospitals in Gaza City happening now with lack of fuel, um, they will be calling for, and I hope they'll get a hearing, for a sustained ceasefire, which would enable fuel to go in, and would also enable, a very important point, the hostages negotiations mm -hmm. to come to fruition. We've only had four hostages out. There are more than 240, we're told, including some Brits. Uh, for them to come out, a genuine cessation of hostilities mm -hmm. would be the best way. I think that's a very uh, fair point, and I, I actually apologise for not mentioning the hostages more, because that is not any important, I mean, vitally important, existentially important for the families involved. It is also the hostages and their families that are exerting the most, you know, the, 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 the most effective pressure on the Netanyahu government domestically to try and rein in some of the excesses of their response to this. I want to ask you about the importance of Saudi Arabia specifically, because... We had the Abraham Accords, of course, between the Gulf states and Israel under Donald Trump. And then we had, you know, many reports of the Saudis making their own peace with Israel. And in none of those negotiations did the Palestinians really get a fair hearing. And it's that is the context in which also Hamas launched these brutal attacks on October the 7th, is it not? Yes. Um it doesn't this, excuse them. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that provides some of the background. No, you're right. Um, the Secretary General of the UN talked about this you know, tragedy, this, uh, this, uh, this, what should we say, this terrorist act by Hamas, uh, initiated on the 7th of uh, October and prolonged by the detention of, of hostages. Um, didn't happen in a vacuum. You're quite right. There is a history. There's a history going back before 1948 and the Balfour Project that I'm involved in looks back at the British role mm. uh, with the Balfour Declaration and the cond our conduct of the mandate, which effectively prevented the creation of a Palestinian state and led to the creation of the State of Israel. Yeah. I, I'm simplifying, but that's that's roughly where, where, we, where we ended in 1948. Um, coming back to your point, um, the hostage families matter greatly. I used to deal with hostage cases for the Foreign Office in the UK, and I have some inkling of the, of the anguish that they are feeling and they have uh, Israeli public opinion on their side, uh, quite quite rightly. Um, it's a it's a top priority for the for the state of Israel to recover those hostages of of all nationalities. Now, what's the best way to do that? Um, I think the best way to do that is with a suspension of hostilities to enable Qatar and Egypt, who are the prime mm. movers in negotiation and who are present at this Riyadh summit, to get on with the task with the Americans, with the uh, International Committee of the Red Cross to deliver releases and the quid pro quo could be delivery of fuel to enable desalination to happen, to enable hosp hospitals, um, ventilators to work for sure. 
you know, neonatal cases, that kind of quid pro quo seems to me to be the next thing that should happen. It's interesting. The most vociferous calls that I've heard in this entire crisis for a, for an immediate ceasefire hasn't come from the streets of London, hasn't come from, you know, Arab governments. It's actually come from the families of the hostages. Who, You're right. Who've been on, no, no, a, okay. who've been on a journey okay. because when I first spoke to them, when I first got there the day after, yeah. you know, such was the nature of the slaughter, they'd more or less given up on their family members. And they said, just go in and do what you have to do. And then as those four hostages were released in two lots, of course, hope was rekindled. Yeah. And now they're saying, no. for goodness sake, there's a chance that my relative, my loved one is still alive. Kids, babies, grannies, you name it, the, the whole spectrum of humanity. Do whatever you have to do to bring them out. Exactly, exactly. And there have been talk, uh, which I don't think is going anywhere, but it's, it's an, inc an interesting question, about an all-for-all -all swap of uh, the, all the hostages, including mm. the soldiers, coming out in return for a release of the 6,000 Palestinian prisoners held in Israeli jails, some of them under administrative detention without trial. Um, I don't know where that's going to go. But if I can come back to, to your key point um, and try to try to draw a distinction between the humanitarian issue and the political issue, they are intermingled, as one of your uh, uh, commentators just said. But right now, what what is needed um, is de-escalation, de-escalation sure. of this war so that um, innocent people can be saved, uh, that there is not no longer starvation in Gaza of 2.3 million people because the complete siege means starvation and the lack of fuel means lack of clean water and so on. Um, and there is a, a, an acute problem in Gaza City, which we're hearing about hour by hour. Now, de-escalation leading to a ceasefire, leading to release of the hostages is a benign circle, a benign way forward. Mm. Anything else is malign and I've been listening to the UN Relief Works Agency, which, apart from Hamas, frankly, is the only functioning entity in, in Gaza, and it's suffering grievously, with 99 people killed, yeah. humanitarian workers killed. UNRWA needs a ceasefire in order to prepare to go back in with guarantees of safety for its people from Israel uh, to deliver that fuel sure. to stop the tipping point, which is coming, of up to one million or more people in Gaza being starving and dying. Yeah, no, I think I think that's that's a very grim, but I think very accurate assessment of what is going on and what could still happen. Uh, and maybe we'll reach a point in the next few days where there will be some, even if they don't call it a ceasefire, a prolonged humanitarian pause in the fighting. I know that President Biden wanted three days. And the Israelis gave him four hours a day. That doesn't seem to be enough. Got to leave it there. Sir Vincent Fien, former consul general to Jerusalem, East Jerusalem. Thank you very much, Neve, for coming on the program.